Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I pray that you had a blessed week. I pray that God's blessing has changed you down. I pray that God's light, provision, power, and protection has been in your life. That's our prayer. Oh, we thank you for everything you've done for us, Lord God. From a baby until now. We thank you for all the doors you shut, for all the ones you open our lives. We thank you for protection, your provision, and your power in our lives, Lord God. We pray right now that come to the midst of us at this very moment and let your word come from these lips. Lord, indwell my mind, body, spirit, and soul. I can say your words, not my words. I pray that you will just till the soil of our heart, mind, body, and soul, so it can accept your true and the true and living words. We pray that you will just saturate us with, with your spirit, Lord God. Lord God, please lead and guide us as we go through this world called life. I pray this prayer in the name, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, all this month, we're talking about living, living for God. When we say living for God, it's not easy. With all the pressures, with all the distractions around us. Sometimes living for God makes us isolated. It has us looking strange or different. But I'm here to tell you that living for God has its benefits. And the scriptures we're going to focus on today is 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. And it states, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creature has come, the old is gone, and the new is here. Now, we know it's all old and old and old and past way, and things come new. But this helps us, helps, but this, this helps us understand what it's saying. It's saying that those old ways, that those old habits, old thoughts have left us and we're living for God now. And sometimes when you live for God, people leave you. You may lose some things, but you gain something greater. This scripture says, and then when they cry, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away, but behold, all things become new. Now, this is Paul speaking. He had experience because his name was Saul, and he was killing Christians. The church, until one day, Jesus met him, and his life changed. What would our lives be like if we were to really, really, really live for God? Whew. You see, it goes back to Reverend Romans 12. Be where it says, we'll be tested and prove what the will of God is good and pleasing and perfect.
Life is hard, y'all. But as long as we got the good Lord on our side, we can make it. Sure, sometimes it's going to be difficult to live for God when everyone else is going right and God tells us go left. We're going to be looked at. As we said before, most people are not going to step foot in a church. But if they see God in us, Christ in us, they just may come to his side. We represent God everywhere we go. It goes back to Hebrews 12, where it says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great crowd, let us therefore throw off that that hinders and all and the sin that easily entangles us, and let us run with perseverance the race. What they're saying, people, people are watching us, y'all. When they see us acting out, they say that's how a Christian act. I don't even be one. They should see a difference in us and the world. Do they see a difference in our actions, words, and deeds? This is, the, this, is the, this, this is the Christmas holiday. Do they see us bound up everything and not acknowledge it? Christ's birth. Is Christmas only about gifts to us? Or is it about the spirit of giving? It's about hospitality. It's about generosity. How we, how we live our lives is how people are going to look at us. We can talk or we want to, but they're watching our actions. So let's live for God. Let's trust God at all costs. What would the world be like if every Christian in the world lived like Christ? What would the world be like? If every follower of Christ live for God, let's find out. Let's find out. I know this word is not a deep word. It's a word. It's, it's, it's needed to us. Because sometimes we get caught up in the hustle and bustle of work, family, getting cars, getting houses. We can't forget about God. Our first love. So let's not forget about God. Let's have him on the front of our mind. He sends only son to this sinful world to die by our sins. For people who are hard headed and stiff necked and disobedient. And if you don't know this Jesus Christ, I want to introduce I want to I want to introduce him to now today.
He'll make life brand new. He'll open doors for you. He'll shut doors that can harm you in your life. He'll be your best friend. If you want him to come to your life, just say this prayer. Lord, I come before you saying thank you for a great sacrifice you made for me on the cross. You die for my sins. I submit my life to you. I want you to take full control of my mind, body, spirit, and soul. Lead and guide my life. Thank you again for dying across my sin. I will live for you. Say this prayer in the, in, the, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. If you say this prayer, you are saved. Now find a Bible-based Christ in the church to go to to know, more, to, to, to know more about Jesus Christ. Go with God all the way and not halfway. Go with God all 